thanks for tuning into this week's STLT video. My name is Mandy and this week Alex and I wake up on Tabarka, have a quick walk over the island and lift anchor to head towards Mar Menor the following early morning. Stick around for some pretty ocean sunrises and don't forget to subscribe. We are right now on the island of Tabarka. It's a very small island and we just anchored off the coast. It is time to check on our anchor. I should have gone earlier, but I was a bit... I needed a drink. So, let's see, we are still above the sandy patch. So let's go have a go! Better late than never. I see us. I'm a little bit scared to dive here because there's jet skis all around you all the time and they really go quickly through the anchorage. I'm a little bit scared to dive too deep and then come up to a blaring jet ski. The thing is you hear them really good on the water but you can't really estimate where they are. But there's a nice sunset. Starting sunset behind me. Good to be in the water. It's so hot. We had a pretty swelly night but we decided it's a good idea still to get off the boat now and have a look at this really cute island. It is actually really nice. I like it. How do you like it? It's uh, picturesque. That's true. The houses are really cute. I don't know. I have to look up when it was uh, when the houses were built and since when people are living here. But it's really cool. The first settlement was created around 1770 when a group of sailors shipwrecked near the coast of Tunisia. They were rescued and settled onto the island and they built them a fortified town with big walls, some warehouses and barracks. Which makes it likely that these walls are about 250 years old. Also the church and one house are still from back then. I don't think all the other little houses are that old though, they might just be from the 19th century. Because then the population on the island had grown to around 1000 people who mainly devoted their life and time to fishing. Nowadays this number has shrunk down to 50, making it the smallest permanently inhabited island in Spain. And the people still mainly live from fishing, but in summer also host the many tourists zipping over from mainland Spain. Six in the morning right now and one hour ago we left Tabarca. We woke up at around 2.30 in the anchorage because the wind picked up and the waves got bigger. We had a stern anchor out so we were in place but it started banging on the hull. And then um, we decided to get the stern in. An hour later or something we decided that we should just head off because it's only gonna get worse. And we wanted first to check the other side of the island. So we lifted anchor and uh, went around the corner to just find out that the swell then came from the other side and we also saw boats leaving that anchorage. So then we just decided to gun it. So now it's almost sunrise. We have waves on beam all the time and we're motoring down to Mar Menor. We could put the main up but honestly the wind is coming from every single direction. That continues with the waves will just lead to massive flapping and damage so we have to get through this without stability of wind because like six knots it should pick up later today but by then we're gone and halfway there trying to uh, sleep the rest of the morning the AIS keeps beeping to tell us that we are not allowed to anchor here like every 20 minutes I don't know it's 55 meters deep it's really swelly it's in the middle of nowhere I wouldn't try to anchor I really wonder why that's in the chart if anybody can tell us that explain us that oh, big way. Oh, Alex just explained to me that this is actually for the tankers and the cargo ships and there are little beacons on the submarine cables. So 
so they don't anchor on top of this cable. So okay, that makes sense. I accept that explanation. Good night. So if you're gonna run, then run with me. If you got a drum, I've got you. Light is pretty amazing though because it's just just about sunrise the clouds are lit up but the sky is still dark and I think in about half an hour we're gonna have some Sun if you're wondering why this lens is so bright it's because it has a very low f-stop but it also means I have to do this in order to not be in your face didn't really go as planned I wanted to really wait until around 11 so now to leave because the winds will pick up in the afternoon and they'll be nice to actually sail down to Mar Menor but as nature has its own plan it built up quite some swell with only about nine or ten knots of wind and we really had to leave and there's not much along the coast where we could go so our only choice would have been to motor down to Torre Vieja and then wait there until the winds kick in and continue for the next three hours that would have been a detour and it's kind of useless so we decided to just go for it and continue all the way directly to Mar Menor and uh, well the winds will kick in when we arrive <laughs> but there was just no way we could stay on the island or anywhere else to wait because this swell is just insane since we started this whole thing on the boat we have not had you know, such big waves with so little wind it's just impossible to sail I don't even know if you would be able to sail with a light wind sail like a spinnaker or anything because I think the boat would still be way too prone to the swell and just get smashed around and I don't think that's any good if you're sailing on a spinnaker either so it's just a very strange sailing area but if you ever sailed down or up the Spanish coast let us know I really want to know if we just chose a wrong time or just have bad luck or if this is always like this yeah so almost there we have to push it a bit because the bridge at Mano Menor so you can enter this well some kind of lake only opens every two hours and the next one is at 12 and we most likely arrive shortly after 12 and then we have to wait two hours to enter so we're kind of pushing it now hoping to just arrive and we just passed some really really massive fish farm that's it's a pretty insane thing i wish i could make a drone shot from the top to see it because that must look really cool anyway just another hour and a half and then Hopefully, we'll have a couple of non-swelly days in Mar Menor. We really need to work and make some videos for you guys. It is time and it was not possible lately. Let's see how it goes. Tower. You do? Nice. Oh yeah, you too. 
Are you ready to go through? Uh, I have to be. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's gonna be exciting. Close quarter maneuvering in a channel that is two to three meters deep and a bridge that opens at 12 or 20 minutes. We'll be there at 12. Yeah, it's gonna be very close. If we go five knots through the whole channel. Well, let's do this then. All right. Which is actually at 3.9. So weird. It's the open ocean in front of a breakwater and it's 3.9. Silting everywhere. But, you know, we only have 155 drops, so we should always be fine. That's true. <laughs> they all have their fenders out. Do you want to prepare them too? Yes, hi, hi, Captain. You can see here the construction of an unfinished harbor. You can actually go in there and anchor, so when we leave, maybe this is where we will anchor. Then. So we definitely made it on time. Yeah, we're a bit too early now. <laughs> now I don't know where to turn or hold the boat, keep steady, you know. There's nowhere to tie up. There's wind, we're in a channel. And it's really shallow. Mm. We'll make it. How many minutes still till the bridge opens? Well, until 12, it's 6. Interesting town. So Mar Menor is a little... What is it? What is Mar Menor? It's kind of a lake. It's kind of a lake, but it's salt water. It's just connected with a bridge. Mar Menor is a salt water lagoon that is separated from the Mediterranean Sea by a 22 kilometer long sandbar called the La Manga Strip. The surface area of the lagoon is almost 170 square kilometers and it has a depth of about 5 to 6 meters. Although in many places it will quickly drop below 2 meters, so be careful. You can find 5 little islands in the southern half of the lagoon, which are mainly inhabited by birds. This makes it perfect for an afternoon exploration, although it is weirdly smelly. If you want to enter Mar Menor, you have to go through a dredged channel that is about 2.5 to 4 meters deep. The bridge Puente del Estacio opens at every even hour for exactly 15 minutes, starting at 8 in the morning until 10 in the evening. It's a relatively high bridge though, so motorboats can still easily pass under it at any time. When the bridge opens, both boats coming in and going out can pass the bridge at the same time. It is wide enough for two boats to drive past each other. Look how incredibly close to shore we are. It's insane. You almost touched the rocks. They're really close, huh? Scary, huh? So many boats. I know. It's busy. And since the channel is dredged, you can stay very close to the rocky side on starboard side when going in. This might feel uncomfortable, but won't get you into trouble. Depths will stay around 3 to 4 meters at all times once you have the bridge straight in front of you. What do you think? It's so cool, I love it. It's like a little playground again. No <laughs> swell, you can moor up everywhere. There's a... Has something. There's a fuel station. There's probably a lot of chandlers. Yeah, we need fuel after this. Oh look, we can just moor up there and bring. Awesome. What a nice place. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. Oh, by the way, the one, the, the slow guy from that we overtook. Yeah. He's gone. Okay. He just took off. Oh really? And behind us, I think I'm too slow. I'm doing five knots. And everyone's in my ass. Oh, look at this poor guy. Eat some love. 
Mar Menor itself is a pretty strange place though. The water is really warm, has a high salinity, making it very popular for all kinds of water sports. The bottom is covered in weed, which makes basically everybody drag anchor all the time, and it is frankly quite smelly. In all honesty, after we picked up our anchor the first time, I decided I would not swim here. The smell that came up with the seaweed and mud was so horrendous, it took me several intense scrubbings to make me not want to gag when putting my hands close to my face. But to each their own. The local Spanish don't seem to have a problem with it and happily enjoy a dive in the bathtub warm waters of Mar Menor. Sky. What is surreal? That. That. This place. That is so surreal. I mean, in the middle over there, it's eight meters. And on, you know, you can basically anchor everywhere. True. And then there, you know, the <laughs> never seen an anchorage that's protected by skyscrapers. Skyscrapers might be a big word, but high buildings. <laughs> True. That is pretty funny. And in here it's super windy and out there we had nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Crazy. Let's go for a sail. Yeah, definitely. We can do high speed here, flat waters. Clean the hall and then we just check out what we can do. Yeah. We're anchoring in uh, four meters and there were some sandy patches that we wanted to approach. And as soon as we were over them, it was from four meters, it went on to one six, one seven. That was very strange. I could really see the rocks. It's rocky, it's not so much sandy over there. So we should be careful with that one. We can go with the dinghy and have a look, right? Have a feeling for it, but it gets shallow real quick. I mean, only the rental boats and the motor boats over there should have given us a sign. Yeah, we're not really on top of our game lately, are we? And the, the, the only sailboats are out here. Yeah. And we're like, ah, oh, come on, let's just do it. Let's find the sandy spot. We yep, no. Yeah, shallow draft in Mar Menor is not really shallow. Right. Little engine did a good job today. Thank you very much. Mar Menor's biggest advantage for us is that it gives us really good protection from the southwest winds that are going to be blasting next week. That you can anchor in the entire lagoon which is really good with the high marina prices along the coast and of course the lack of swell since it is closed off from the Med by a big strip of land. You feel it? Yes. We're safe. Look, I can do this. And I can also do that. Have to be careful, but I can do it. <laughs> We're safe. Well, now you Finally. can Finally. jump around all day. I think this is the only place on the coast of Spain or you don't have swell. A sandbar divides this massive lagoon from the annoyingly swelly man. <laughs> so we can have a week of rest. Sleep, eat, cook, clean, make videos, so nice. edit. Let's buy a new camera. Bah. Somehow we need to get a new camera. I'm gonna go see you now.